Greetings, it is I, Tantus Nab and Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion of the Pathfinder role-playing game system. All right, we're talking about conditions we were talking about before we're continuing. So let's start, of course, with exhausted. When you are exhausted, you are just drained of your energy, you are feeling sluggish. Game terms, you can move at half speed, you can't run, you can't charge. When we're talking about your statistics, your strength, you get a minus six penalty to it. Huge disadvantage. You just can't, oh, too tired to lift anything. things. You also get that minus six penalty to your dexterity. You're feeling all sluggish. Now, you can remove the exhausted condition through rest. An hour of rest will change exhausted to fatigued. Hey, I've gotten better. I'm only oh, a little tired. I'm not so drained. But it is important to note that when you're fatigued, any kind of additional thing that you would do that would cause fatigued will once again drop it to exhaustion. So you can easily go from fatigued to exhaustion. Next up, let's talk about fascinated. There are certain spells and supernatural effects that will cause you to become fascinated. When you're fascinated, you are infatuated with one thing. It is all that you can think and concentrate on. You may take no other actions just to, other than being fascinated with what you're concentrating on. It's all that's in your mind. If there's ever a reason for any kind of opposed skill check, like perceptions, you get a minus four to it. And the fact is, you're going to be fascinated until one of two things occurs. First off, if you are approached or in some way threatened by a hostile creature. If this threaten just seems to be like, oh, this big nasty creature is nearby to you, I get a, another save to overcome the fascinated. Like, I'm like, oh, one of my enemies is coming into me. I've known him to be an enemy. I get another save. If I fail this, I can still possibly overcome the fascinated. If they brandish a weapon, use a weapon on me, use a spell on me, do anything that is directly aggressive, fascination breaks right away. So as soon as he does something to me, bam, I'm woken up. I'm like, oh, geez. Or like, he's like, Shh, draws that sword. I'm like, Ooh. you know, I break out of it. The other thing is if I've got a buddy who isn't fascinated, they can come over to me and use a standard action to rile me awake, get that, get me like, me, free my brain of what's going on. So it's like, oh, 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 thanks. Now, fatigued is you're kind of tired. Now, in this case, I can't run, I can't charge. My movement's not restricted like it was with exhausted. And I get a minus two penalty to strength and dexterity. So it's not as big of a penalty to my strength and dexterity, but it still exists there. As I said before, if I should do something that would exhaust, that normally would fatigue me, while I'm fatigued, it becomes exhaustion. And in order to cure fatigue, it requires eight hours of rest. So it might be pretty quick to go from exhausted back to fatigued, but getting rid of fatigue, that takes time. Now, flat-footed, you're just unaware. You're caught off guard. Something's going on. In this case, it's before you would act on a turn in any combat. So it's, combat's begun. I haven't acted. I'm still flat-footed. Or, if all of a sudden something happens to me, like I didn't know that rogue was hidden behind me and he's popping out of the shadows to shank me, I'm flat-footed against that. In this case, I lose my dexterity bonus to AC. Simple as that. I'm just unprepared for somebody stabbing me in the back or attacking me. It's effectively what it is, being unprepared. Now if I'm frightened, I must flee from whatever is frightening me. If I can't flee from it, if whatever reason I'm in a service, whatever's causing me fright, I can't flee from it, I am allowed to attack. But I get minus two to all my attacks because it's hard to attack against it. Minus two to any saves against it. It's hard to defend myself. And minus two to any skills. It's hard to concentrate on things. And should I have any kind of spells or supernatural abilities that would help me to flee from this thing or make me be able to flee from this thing faster, I will use them to get away. 
That means right before, I'm like, hmm, I can teleport. I'm teleporting away. Now, this is indeed like being shaken, kind of being riled up. This is a more extreme version of fear. This is the middle ground of fear. This is not being panicked and forced to flee that way. But you're pretty filled with fear at this point in time. Now, when you're grappled, somebody is holding on to you or you're holding on to someone. You're basically wrestling with someone in some way, whether you began the grapple yourself or they began the grapple on you. In this case, you get a minus four penalty to your dexterity. You get minus two to any attacks or CMB checks, except when it comes to either maintaining the grapple on your target or breaking free from them. In those cases, you don't get that minus two to your CMB. Now, in this case, I can't take any actions that require two hands. I have to at least have one hand on my target. If something requires only one hand, I can still pull it away and do something to the guy. If I'm trying to cast a spell, I theoretically could, but I need to make a concentration check. It's a little difficult. The DC will be 10 plus the grappler's CMB bonus plus the spell level. Which, depending on what it is, if it's got a really big CMB bonus that is using combat maneuver bonus, you're probably not going to be succeed on that concentration check. Still might, but probably not. And if I fail it, I lose that spell. Gone. Just like failing a concentration check to cast on defensive. Lose the spell. Now, if I'm grappling, I can't make attacks of opportunity. I'm concentrating on either, you know, holding off this person from getting a better grab on me or grabbing them myself. And the fact is, if I'm grabbing someone that might have the ability to hide, even in plain sight, let's say you're a shadow dancer and have the hide in plain sight ability, you don't see me anymore even if I'm here, doesn't work. You can't hide from someone. You can't use stealth in this case. You can't stealth away from someone that's holding on to you. You can go invisible, but invisible, all it does is give you a plus two bonus to your CMD to avoid grapple. That's it. It makes it easier to avoid grapple because you're invisible. No other bonuses from being invisible. Now, if I'm helpless, I can't move. I'm not moving. I'm either unconscious or unable to do anything. I'm in a state where I'm completely open to everything. I have effectively have a dexterity of zero. This means a minus five dexterity modifier I will be having at this point in time, which will apply to things like saves and to your AC. Pretty bad. So if I had a bonus before, guess what? Not only is that bonus gone, minus five. I'm wide open. And if someone's attacking me with a melee weapon, they get plus four. They're able to stab me really well. Granted, if I'm using ranged weapons, no extra bonuses against that helpless person. None extra. It's only melee that get that bonus. Now, as a full round action, if I'm next to a helpless opponent, I have an option. Coup de gras. Basically, that's, well, stabbing someone in the head. That's the easiest way of describing it. I'm hitting that weak point because they can't do anything about it and crushing them with a blow that's made to kill them off. A Coup de Gras, as I said, is full round and has to be made with a melee weapon. Or, if I'm adjacent to it, I can use a bow and a crossbow. So if I'm right up to him, I can bow him in the head or crossbow him in the head. This automatically does a critical hit and confirms the critical hit. If I'm a rogue, I'm automatically sneak attacking. So, big hit, big damage. I roll all my damage, roll my critical, roll, of course, the sneak attack if I have it. If the target survives, they need to make a save now. 10 plus the damage dealt to them, or they die. Now, it is important to note that a coup de gras provokes an attack of opportunity. So, usually if I'm up here and still battling people, I'm probably not going to take the time to coup de gras. I might kill him off, but might leave myself open to get some hits in me. Probably not a great idea. Now, if whatever I'm hitting is immune to criticals, it doesn't take critical hit damage. Same if it's immune to sneak attacks, not taking sneak attack damage. It's still an automatic hit. It's still doing the damage it would do, but if it's immune to any of these things, ignores them. And if it's immune to criticals, doesn't have to make the save versus dying. Because I'm not shooting it in something like the brain or the heart, which will finish it off. 
I don't have a critical place to hit it. Now, if I'm incorporeal, I'm like a ghost. I have no physical body. Weapons will pass right through me. Non-magical weapons? I'm immune to them. What can they do to me? Any kind of magic weapons, spells, or supernatural effects only do half damage to me. The only thing that damages me as an incorporeal creature. Other incorporeal creatures? Or force effects, like a magic missile. So that wizard over there could still magic missile me and do me a lot of damage. I might want to go haunt him directly instead of his friends. The real threat in this party. But that's it for today. So we talked a bunch of, bunch of conditions for Pathfinder. Really fascinating ones. Hmm, got you there. We're going to continue with some and hopefully finish up the Pathfinder book next time. But until then, have a great day. And of course, I bid you farewell.